What up, it's your main man, DJ Chaotic, a.k.a. the movie director, a.k.a. the voice of the unit, 50 Cent's official tour DJ, you know what it is, and I'm a real-life street star, and we just did an exclusive interview. Tune in, tap in, you already know what it is. Joker, get him! Real life. Real life street star. Yeah. Hold on, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> we got some legendary shit going on, man. It's very legendary right now, man. We got DJ Chaotic, man, uh, a.k.a. the movie maker, man, the hit maker, man, the, uh, man. the shit, the heartbreaker, man. Go man. go and go through there, man. Uh, how's it going, man? For those that are deaf, done, stupid, living on the rock, man, uh, go on, man. Reintroduce yourself, man. Tell them where you from. DJ Chaotic, a.k.a. the movie director, a.k.a. the voice of the unit. You see what it is. G-Unit. Branson hey. Gang, Le Chemin du Bois. Shout out to my brother 50 Cent. But first and foremost, Ooh. we're live street stars. I'm officially Ooh. on the blue couch. Officially on the blue couch. I've been looking at this couch. couch for a couple of years now. Like, Come on now. When am I going to get on this couch? Come on now. I've seen a lot of people on this couch. Come on I'm now. I'm finally on the infamous blue couch. So salute to y'all. I see y'all putting a lot of work in. And thank you for having me here, my brother. Nah, it's crazy because you've been putting in the work, man. Uh, you know, as you kind of been watching our rise, man, we've been watching your rise. And uh, man, you kind of all over the game. But for those that don't know, like you just said, you got the unit on your head. You know, G G G G unit. Uh, and if they can't see, man, you you got hey, you you came with the New York Tim's on uh, official, man, you know, the butter zone, you know, you know what I'm saying. I'm I'm I'm, I'm a Texas Dallas transplant, but I'm from <laughs> Southside Jamaica Queens, New York, 130th from Garbro. You know, check the resume, you know what it is. So I am I am a New York cat. But I live in Dallas, Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, and that's where home is, and I embrace it. But you know, I am a New Yorker by 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 living and trade and all that good stuff. So man, yeah. I want to go and get straight to it, man. As you told me, as you pulled in, um, you know, uh, of course, people may know you as, you know, of course, a voice of the city, man. Uh, one of the throatest DJs in the, in this city, as you know, your residence is Dallas, but um, of course, as 50 Cent's DJ. Uh -huh. Um, you know, uh, you didn't acclimate it to that, but you and 50 Cent's ties go back further. Yeah. Than just DJing for his music career right now. Yeah, um, me, me and Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. As I, as I call him, the boss, my brother. Uh, we go back to childhood. We're childhood friends. So again, I, that's the reason why I threw out the South Side of Queens, 130 and Guy Brewer. That's our, that's our hood. That's our street. So that's where we grew up at. I've been knowing five since age eight, nine, ten, somewhere in that range. You know, when we, before the, the rapper, before the mogul that he is today, I, I know Curtis Jackson as Boo Boo. So boo boo, boo boo, you know that's what we call them in the hood. So before before he was even robbing people, you know, we, we, I know him and that guy. So we used to hoop. we used to play ball together. We grew up together. My mother and his grandmother went to church together. So there's a lot of ties there. Before you know, we got into the space to where I'm actually DJing for him. So a lot of backstory behind it, but I'm, I'm a true believer in things come full circle. So full things circle. have come full circle for me when it comes to being with this guy now. Let me ask you, um. When you seen the movie Get Rich or Die Trying, mm -hmm. uh, how much of the early parts of that movie did they get right? That you felt like just the vibe of uh, Southside Jamaica, just the just the way the vibe of the city back then, because you actually lived it. Mm -hmm. When they when they put that on screen, how did you feel they got it right? It then? made me miss home. Damn. You know, it, it, you know, home is where the heart is. It made me miss home, and just to see his elevation and his growth. You know, again, we we you know, I left New York at age nineteen twenty. Yeah. So, and that's when he was on his rise. That, that 1997 time frame is when I left New York. And, and that's when he was on his rise, his climb. And to see the elevation of where he went, you know, when we, when we finally connected, reconnected, you know, he was, I'm, I'm giving him his accolades and the praise and his flowers saying, yo, I applaud you. For, you know, we get out the mud. So to see where he's at and, and where he became, he's like, you a DJ now? I'm like, yeah, he's like, you a DJ? He's like, I'm used to hoop. I'm like, no, nah, I'm a DJ now. And, it, and at that point, it was really unbelievable for him. Like, I was actually in Chicago for a boot camp for a morning show. And we bumped into each other in a party. And he was like, what you doing now? I told him about my wife and the kids and stuff like that. We sitting there just talking about regular stuff, no energy stuff. And he's like, so what are you doing now? I was like, I'm a DJ. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you a rapper? I'm a DJ. Yeah, yeah. So, at, at, what, at what point of this conversation, what era of, What era was this? This was is 2018. 2018, okay, all right. So man. 2018. So and we'll go back to, you know, how I got to Dallas and all that stuff. But 2018, I'm in Chicago. We reconnect. We have this long, lengthy conversation. And we just left it at that. You know, we took a couple of flicks. We, we exchanged numbers. It was good to just catch up with my childhood friend. A year later, you know, his management team reached out to me and says, hey, 
we want to bring you onto the squad and, and do some stuff with his, his uh, liquor company. Branson, Lisherman, we want you to represent him, but we need you to meet him first. And, you know, my guy, I'll uh, test this, my guy, Renee, shout out to my brother, Renee, who's yeah. one of his managers. He was like, you got to meet Fifth. I'm like, Renee, it's not me and Fifth. This is my guy from childhood. He's like, yeah, yeah, okay, chaotic. You know, we hear that all the time. Everybody said they know Boo Boo, but I'm like, Renee, I'm telling you right now, when he see me, he's not going to say chaotic. He's going to say Kareem Thompson. And I don't mind putting my government name out there because everybody know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so he comes out here to the Statler, one of the hotels out here in Dallas, downtown Dallas. I know you're familiar with it. And they have a big uh, uh, bowling party. So Renee says, you know, I'm going to take you up to the suite so you can meet Curtis or Mr. Jackson or Fifth. And I said, all right. I said, I'm letting you know right now, once again, when he sees me, it's going to be a different story. He's like, all right. So we go up to the suite and open the door. He's like, 50 Cent, DJ Chaotic, DJ Chaotic, 50 Cent. First thing he said was, man, that's Kareem Thompson from my neighborhood. Yeah, that's exactly what you're saying. He was like, like, I said, and then Renee was like, he said that. I said, I told you. So the rest is history. So from 2018, 2019 timeframe, we reconnected. And then we've just been running ever, ever since on the, on the liquor side of things. And then fast forward, you know, uh, September of last year, you know, aside from me doing the brands and stuff, he reached out to me. He had some, some situation going on with the tour. And he, he removed his old guy and was like, it's time to bring you into the fold of things. And I took over the tour. And he took over the, um, the uh, final lap tour. Man. Yeah. So six month tour, 103 dates. I did the majority of dates. I did four months of the tour. So my was first that the world, big, yeah, Was that the biggest tour? I mean, I'm sure that's the biggest tour you've been a part of. That's the first tour I've been the a part tour. of. The first tour. And with my childhood friends celebrating the 20 year anniversary of Get Rich or Die Trying. So for me, it was very surreal. Like I said, it's Come one of those full circle moments. To see my guy blossom to where he went and where, he's, where he is today, to reach back for a, a, a kid like me from Southside Jamaica, Queens, and says, come on. And now he's showing me the world. So from the projects to, to private jets, we've been moving and, 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 and doing what we got to do best. So it's been, a, it's been a, a great story. And it's the final lap tour, but as he says, it's forever. So we're not stopping. All right. All right. So let me ask you this. Um, on that tour, um, what would you say was probably one of your throw to cities that uh, that um, Detroit was incredible because we brought out Eminem and the energy of the city itself just bringing out one of his best friends in the industry that helped him get to where he is today and to see the energy and his chemistry and the commodity amongst, amongst them two was incredible aside from that all the overseas stuff was incredible but the entire tour itself was just incredible each city is different every fan is different um, it's just an experience of a lifetime. So I'm, I'm more than thankful for it. It was a blessing. And, uh, you know, it's been incredible. But again, I missed the first part of the tour. So I missed the New York run, the Barclays yeah. and all this stuff. So I missed all that. So and then obviously we came to Dallas. I took wifey and the kiddos there. They called, you know, he, my, my, my daughters are, are nieces. They, that's Uncle 50 to them. So they got to see their first concert, which is 50. So they embraced that. So, but that was before I got that call. Let me know this. Um, as his DJ, what song get the biggest pop when it comes on? Many man. Many many man get many before man. in the club before. Many man. Man, uh, you know you you wouldn't. It doesn't matter the color of the skin. It doesn't matter the age demo. That song resonates with so many different people because you know people do wish death upon you. Not Blood nice. in my eyes. Yeah, you just, know, it's just one of those one of those records that just it connects and and he tell this all the time. It's one of the songs he hated. When he first put on, yeah, he, he said that we had we had a uh, um, young buck mm -hmm. on here, mm -hmm. and uh, young buck was saying like, "Bro, that he didn't like that song, yeah. but then it became one of his favorites." So, and then aside from that, of course, you got you know AO technology, so like oh, those yeah. all those songs in the club is obviously the smash of all smashes because everybody's gonna celebrate a birthday at some point, right? At some point, so that song's never gonna die. But yeah. energy wise, you know, we cut the lights out during the tour. Everybody got their cell phones out, Come on. and we dropped that. Doom, doom. It's like it just, it just, it just does something to the crowd. Man, all right. So let's do it like this. Um, growing up uh, in Southside South Jamaica, I'm just curious because you know we hear stories. We watch the notorious movie. We see these other. Uh, we see the Dipset movement. Mm -hmm. Is it really like that sectioned off to where were the other rap, were there other rappers now that you were hunt, were around then that weren't who they are now? From other hoods, or let's say, or just even from your hood. Yeah, I mean the, the boroughs are separated. So you got Queens. You got the Bronx, you got Brooklyn, and you know you got Staten Island. So it's like they're definitely separated in, in that aspect. 
segregated in a sense. Yeah, I'm about to say y'all can have that. Uh, say, uh, you don't uh, move uh, around, let me just go hang out over here for a day or two and whoop the whoop. You know, in, in my early stages of life, you know, you go to Brooklyn, you could get, if you're from Queens, you can get robbed real quick. Damn. You know, and I, I didn't got robbed on a J train. So just from someone not knowing you or just like, oh, you- You they, just look like, you look like a Queens nigga. You look like a Queens nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you not from Brooklyn. We, we can tell, but the, the same rules apply. Go, You know, if a Brooklyn nigga's in Queens, it's like, yeah, you you somewhere you don't belong right now. So it's one of those things where it's 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 not as segregated as it is back then. But back then, yeah, you had to you had to you know keep your head on a swivel. So as far as in the rap scene as aspects of it, you know, Queens had a different approach. You know, you got Nas, you got Fifty, you got Run DMC. You know, at that era, the Bronx had KRS One and stuff like that. So it's just like that era, that generation is different. No you know, whereas now everybody is doing music and everybody kind of vibes with each other and the scene is a lot different. The strip clubs are different, you know, so it's just it's different vibe. Let me ask you, was uh, DJ always your calling? Um, no. Uh, so, what, yeah, what'd you try before trying so, your hand in? So it? here's the backstory. So I moved, I moved here in Dallas in 2004, 2003, 2004. What made you move here, if you don't mind me asking? My son, mom's, was from Dallas, well, from East Texas. Okay. I was in the military. And I wanted to be closer to him. So I had a choice when I got the military. It was either move back to New York. I, I was moved to Atlanta for a hot minute. Then I was like, you know what? I want to be close to him. So let me move to Texas. Couldn't move to the East Texas because it was just way too slow for me. So I was like, Dallas, I'm going to make Dallas home. I moved here in 2004. And I came here on some corporate America kind of vibe. But I also represented, I was a brand ambassador, a lifestyle marketing guy for a drink called Hypnotic. I remember, yeah, okay. Everybody, so, everybody loved the hypnotic. So I was the guy that used to call out here called Mr. Hypnotic. I had everybody drinking the Incredible Hoax and the blue drinks. and all. So that's how people knew who, they knew me as Mr. Hypnotic. What are your thoughts on the hypnotic drink now? I mean, I'm only drinking Branson and listening to the <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know nothing about that. I don't know what they got going on. I don't know what it tastes like no more. I don't know, what, like don't know no what they got going on. Facts. I couldn't Branson's tell you. Yeah. yeah. And, but, and, and true story is like, I, 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 because my name grew so fast in the in the clubs as quote unquote Mr. Hypnotic, when I got on radio, and it's still part of the backstory, I, I deemed my name, that was my moniker, Mr. Hypnotic. And they sent a cease and assist letter to the station. So I had to change my name. So before DJ Chaotic, I was Mr. Hypnotic. I was a host out here. I used to host parties. And that's how everybody knew me. I was not only guy getting you drunk. I was, always, I was the MC at parties. Oh, yeah. So from 2004 to about 2007, that's all I did. Host parties, get people to drunk. So as a transplant into the market, you can imagine the impact I had. I'm a New Yorker. I got an I got a, a energy about me. I rock with everybody. And for the people that wanted to embrace me in the market, people that's here from born and raised in the market, you know, if you didn't know me, let me get you drunk so we can become best friends. You know, that's a good way to do it. Let that's me give you an incredible hope, yeah, my that, guy. That opens up conversation. Yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> where you from, New York? We don't really mess with, you know, you a Cowboys fan? No. Well, we're we going to let you make it, though, because yeah. you're getting us drunk. And that's how, everybody, you know, I got cool with everybody from, you know, the George Lopez, the Tum Tums, all, you know, T-Cash, all them guys. I was getting them drunk in the clubs, and we got cool. And like I said, I was hosting parties. And then it got to a point in around 2007, as I was hosting, I said to myself, I want to complete control of the party. So I used to envy the DJ. I used to envy the DJs I was working with as I was hosting parties and saying, yo, play this new record, drop this new record. And sometimes they didn't have it. And I used to be like, you ain't got it? And I saw a lane. I said, oh. you know what? I want to I wanna become a DJ. So you're an MC. I'm an MC. You, you handling drinks. Handling drinks. But it'd be a situation where you tell a DJ, hey, I know this song's going to set, set a vibe, and they don't got they it. Don't they don't know it. it. They don't know it. And I'm like, how you don't know it? How you a DJ, you don't know the new new? Or was really bubbling. And the thing is, like, when I get when I first got out here, you know, and I, I can date myself, like, like I said, 2004, I used to go to spots like Rhythm City and Jamie's, you know. Oh, yeah, shout out Rhythm City. Old and James spots. Rhythms. And I used to listen, one of the DJs I used to listen to was uh, DJ Drop. Shout out DJ Drop. He, yeah. he set it off. Definition DJ. Yeah, he set it off. So I used to sit in the club and just study and watch and, I, and, and learn the market, learn the energy of the market. And I, I watched the Steve Nices, the DJ Phils, yes. the TDKs, like, I'm, I'm naming some pioneer DJs that yeah, I, pioneers. Look, I, I watched and studied and just seen how they rock parties. Because I tell people this all the time. Be, I'm from New York, but if you can rock and party in Dallas, Fort Worth, you can rock and party anywhere. Come on, man. Because this is a party, this is a party market. Yes. But it's also a market that I tell you, now nah, we're not fucking with you. Yeah, and we're, and we're open to like all coasts. Like if, if it's a vibe, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. But if it's not, they're gonna let you know it's you know. not. 
the toughest crowd. Like it's it's it's, it's a tough crowd, but once you once you get it, you got them. And once they believe in you, they like okay, I'm rocking with you. So you know, again, I'm sitting in the club just studying. So when it came to the point where I'm hosting these parties, I'm looking at a DJ that has a crutch and it's like, you ain't got this, you ain't got that. So I was like, you know what, 2007, I'm like, I'm gonna be a DJ. So I talked to certain people in the market, the Steve Nices, you know, some of the TDK, the Phils, you know, Vertico, stuff like that. It was like, yo, Big Daddy. yeah, like, yo, I wanna be a DJ. And like, really? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, well, first thing you need to do is get some turntables. You need to get this mix. You need so got that. I'm I'm staying downtown. Did you go to cheap route or you went and got something expensive? Nah, right take me twelve hundred. Right, boom, rain mixer. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, I wasn't. I was. I was. And, and the thing was, and, and they respected it because what I wasn't gonna do is use the cheat sheet. I wasn't trying to do the push button shit. Yes. I wanted to, you learn, want to learn the it. craft of DJ. That's real. So I took a year off from hosting. Got in the lab. So self taught myself. Reached out to f- certain folks when I needed to, to kind of get some insight on things. Kind of trick to the trade. And I stepped out in like 2009, first gig, Opus Lounge. If you if you if you're in the market, if you know Dallas market, there was a club called Opus Lounge, and and what was the other spot? Opus called? was lit. Opus, Opus was and lit. and what was the other joint called? It was the, it was it was the bigger club of, the, of of Opus. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, what uh, Purgatory? Purgatory. Purgatory. Yeah. So five levels. You know, yes. So I stepped, my debut was at Opus Lounge. Yeah. One of the radio personalities out here, if, if you're in Dallas, you know him, he's been on the radio for a million years, Cat Daddy was hosting. Oh, should I, why? Should I Cat, Cat Daddy, Daddy was hosting. And my debut night, he's like, yo, I can't believe you're really doing this shit. I'm like, yeah. And my first debut, debut night. Debut night. Oh. And I was trash. I played, I played every verse of every song you could think of. And everybody's like, damn, I didn't even know such and such was on that song. Oh, you oh, you went three, four, five minutes in to the song. Playing full songs. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to mix them in. He's like, yo. yo. I didn't even know Gucci was on that song. <laughs> so at that point, I was like, I'm not ready yet. So I took another six months off. And then I stepped back out. And kind of the rest is history. So aside from that, you know, the DJing component, while I was doing that, I, was, I did a contest here in, in Dallas to be the next on-air personality. So my career was changing. I went from being a corporate America lifestyle marketing guy to an MC slash DJ to now radio personality. Yes. I joined K104, one of my old stations, joined them. And I was on the morning show with them for a minute. Correct. Took a brief hiatus from that. Then I went to 97.9 on the beat. So I've been on radio for 15 years. Yeah. I've been doing morning show for almost 15 years. Yeah. So I had the morning show stuff going on, had the DJ stuff going on, and then when things took off for me, DJing wise, is and I'm again, I'm. I'm, uh, let, and I'm remember when things took off for DJ wise, but I got to ask you about the morning show. Uh, uh, just the atmosphere. Do it really be such a competitive spirit when it comes to K one hundred four to ninety seven nine? It's Bloods and Crips. Yes, yeah, it, I mean, it, like, it, it, like it's Bloods and Crips. Do y'all go in there and have like, hey man, we seen that they did this the other day. Uh, we gonna try to uh, uh, uh. like do it be conversations of how we're gonna. Like we got a shit on the other side. And in, in, in the early years of radio, when I like again, 2007, 2008, that time frame when I joined K104, yes. I think now is more of we all know we don't own the radio station. Yeah. So Listen. yeah, social media wise, we Changes look again. We, we we look at each other and you know, we've looked at each other and said, you know, we got we gotta step it up a notch, but it ain't that energy anymore. Whereas before, in the early stages. We go to Martin Luther King Parade. <laughs> oh, we y'all stay on that side of the street. We gonna be on this side of the street. You put up banners. We put up no banners. banners. It, was, it was it was that. It was uh, that. You and you get caught up in that when you when you in radio, you start believing that shit. Like yeah, yeah I remember yes, that. I, I, true story. When I when I left K one hundred four, I left. I took a year off. And Bink, Big Bink, who's the PD now, ninety seven nine, brought me into to the station. And my first day of trying not to be on 97.9, the first thing I said on the air was, it's K104 Hip Hop, and they looked at me like, Ooh, and I said, I said on the air, oh yeah, I used to be on the red team, but now I'm on the blue team. I used to be a okay. blood, but now I'm a crit. Damn. And they was looking at me like, so. they was like, good way to clean that up. I was yeah, like. I was, <laughs> I was like, you said niggas. Right. <laughs> right. So it was that serious back then. And that was 2011 that I joined 97.9. I like so. how you said that. That was before social media. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause social media changed the game to where, come on, now we, it's like the NBA. Like it used to be like, hey, nah, we fuck them. But now it's like, nah, we, come on. We it's see. competitive. Yeah. You know, everybody trying to get those numbers, but it boils down to it. 
you in a market that that it's a top five market. If you really want to survive in this market, you cannot befriend somebody across the street. That it just don't make no sense. And 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 the radio circuit and the radio market is very small anyway. You know, so you don't want to burn any bridges when the boys down to it. We they all eat together and they all vibe together. And like I said, we don't own no radio stations. Exactly. So that there's no hate. You know, there's 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 good energy and there's good competition, but there's no hate. There you go. There you go. All right. So that goes back to saying, you know, as far as your, uh, your this is your night, you're going to you yeah. some hiatus and DJ. Yeah. Right. So club wise, um, you know, and I think for me, like I said, I started out in a it was a rocky start, and then I hit the I had the biggest club in Texas for ten years strong. If if you're familiar, you know, Joker, you you in the market? You remember yeah. Beamers? Oh hell yeah, Beamers. So I was a resident DJ at Beamers oh, man. from day one. So when it was changed over to Park Avenue, yeah, uh, and I was yeah. resident DJ at Park the, Avenue. So, oh, so you were at Park Avenue. As well. I did. That was my whole. Oh, yeah, that, was my whole that was my whole DJ career here in the market. Of that was my club. That yeah, was home for me. And I want people in the comments to ask, you know, how many babies uh, did y'all make going to Beamers? Because you know, Beamers Listen, was a spot to where mistakes was made. A lot shit. of things. A lot of things happened at Beamers shit. nightclub. Yes, a lot of things happened. So that that was the you know that took my my DJ career to another level. You know, and that also allowed me to really be embraced by the city. You, you know, go. every weekend, Friday, Saturdays, and some Sundays, you know, we're talking about 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 people just off of the muscle. That's not even bringing in a celebrity. And when the celebrities came in, it's ridiculous. And you know, if you've been in this market, if you've gone to Beamers, we've had the Chris Browns, we've had the Ushers, we've had every, the who's who of everybody has been at that venue. And then, Next. you know, it grew up to Park Avenue, which became the, you know, I guess the upper scale version of it. But that was a lifeline for me of just my career as a DJ and put me on that pedestal of being able to break artists, being able to build with artists and understand the market, but also just make the market stronger than, than what it was on the music scene. Yeah. You know, I remember, you know, guys like Yellow Beezy coming in, into the club and servicing me their records. And it's like, I'm like, and, and me not knowing who they are, and true story. Yeah, I, I'll tell you a let's true go. story. Yellow Beezy was servicing a record, didn't really know who he was. Mr. Hit That, who wasn't a DJ at the time, yeah. was like, you don't know about Yellow Beezy? Yeah, I need to connect. Me and Yellow Beezy got on the line. Yellow Beezy was like, you don't fuck with me. I'm like, I don't really know your music. Once I knew his music, the rest is history. We, we, we weren't vibing until he and I got on a call, and that was like, oh, now I know who you are. And at that time, the song he was uh, pushing was Trap and Designer. Yeah, young nigga trapping designer. <laughs> young nigga trapping designer. From that point on, so I'm, I'm a Yellow Beezy fan because again, as a DJ, you, you don't know everything. Yeah, but I said, who do you feel like when Yellow says you don't, you're not, you don't fuck with me? Mm -hmm. And at the time, trapping designer is a song, and it's like you just probably haven't caught on yet. Where's the disconnect you feel between DJ and artist when you know Half Pint Film shoot a video, it's bubbling in the streets, but as a DJ, you're at one of the biggest clubs in Dallas, and that song has not come to your ears. Where is the disconnect? Is it, it the artist's fault? Is it the DJ's fault for not ear to the streets? I, Artists not reaching up and you know sending niggas and forcing themselves on? I think it's a combination of both. As a DJ, you're supposed to do your due diligence and, and, and learn your city. Excuse me, but it's a lot of music. It's a lot of music out here. And and for me, it's like, you know, you could do, you know, most music in this market bubbles at the strip club. So if I'm not in that scene, I might not know what's really bubbling. So it may take somebody else to tap you on the shoulder and say, yo, you're not tapped in with this person? You might want to get tapped in. And those one of those one of those one-off situations where, yeah, he may not have been in Beamers actively, or his team may not be in Beamers actively, or Park, Park Avenue actively. But once we once we had that conversation, it was Sky's Limit. Now at that time, there's other artists that I was breaking. T Cash. Yes, sir. B Kane. Yes, you know, sir. A, you know, and these are these are artists that I tell you, chaotic broke the record. You know, so it's not like I wasn't doing my job. It's that I just he wasn't on my radar at the time. But once he got on my radar, I was like, oh, I got you. So let me ask you, Chaotic, um, this is one of those questions that, for you know, technically it's an older question, but it's still a question that was always curious and it probably still plays now. Um, how does an artist get a DJ to play his song in a club? Um, and this goes for the guy in the regular little hole in the wall club mm -hmm. to somebody at Big Ass Park Avenue. What are ways that artists who feel like they got a hit song, can they get that DJ's attention to play the song in the club that night? Meet that DJ before he walks in that club. As he's setting up, try to build a rapport, have a conversation, get him a drink. Say, I want to, you know, let's 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 chop it up somewhere off, off site. But if you show up at peak hours at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, trying to get your record played, for me, doesn't matter how much money you 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 throwing at me, 
I'm not gonna fuck up my crowd for some shit I never heard before. <laughs> Don't even know what's about to come up. Now, now that's some real shit. Actually get there early. Early. Fuck with the DJ. Fuck with the DJ. Post up with him in the booth. Yes. Might be uncomfortable. Yo, you, you, yo, you need me to carry it. Whatever it is, yo. Whatever it yeah. is, I, I'm trying to build with you. Here's my record. I'm catching you early before you even set up. So now, now I know who you are. Now I know the record. Now I know to check for it. If I don't check for it for that night, at least it's on my radar to check for it the following night. So it's just one of those things where you can't do it at peak hours. And the mistake people make is they come on peak hours and they want like their service record. And it's like, I'm not playing at that time. It's not going to happen. All right. All right. So let me ask you this. Um, when it comes to, um, you know, things get crazy in the club. But I think I get your DJ, exp- you know, your expertise. Mm-hmm. Uh, if a crazy ass fight break out, <laughs> what song, uh, what song do you uh, play? Oh, uh, what, where, where do you go and how long do you let a fight last before you go to that song? See, well, here's, here's the method to my madness. If a fight breaks out, and I've done this at Beamers, I've done this at Park Avenue, and I still do it to this day. First and foremost, rule number one, I'm not stopping the music. I'm not going to do that because that's going to draw more attention to the fight and the energy to it. Okay, okay. What I'm going to do, what, ask why, what I'm gonna do is it's time for the slow jams. Now, fellas, grab that lady. Ladies, grab that fella. Y'all want to fight over there? Y'all can do that all day long. But we're going we gonna to vibe over here. I'm going to set the tone. We're going to keep it real sexy until, yeah. that, until that energy is gone. And then we're going to crank it back up. So I, I, will, I will throw on the, slow, the, the hit slow jams to where niggas is like, the niggas fighting over there, but nigga. Yeah. This nigga right here. Yeah, the, the female I've been looking at all night. I'm trying to get, I, I don't see, know what I they are. Yeah. And they look over like, oh, that, oh, but oh. I got to change, change, change the vibe real quick. And then once that's out the way, once security's done their job, we crank it back up. I ain't gonna lie, I was uh, in the car the other day and I was uh, riding, and I was listening to Lil John, and I think it was B.I.B.I. or Fuck That. It was some mm-hmm. song that uh, I was like, bro, these songs just make niggas fight. As a DJ, do you put on songs that you like, I know niggas might fight? Mind you, you've been doing this for a while now. Yeah. To where I know this song might get niggas in niggas' face. Yeah. Are you watching the crowd to see, like, let me see what reaction this caused? And do you kind of want it to get a little rowdy? Listen, I, I, want, I want it to get ratchet. I mean, that, that's that's <laughs> yeah. a given. I want to do that, but you know, it's it's all about creativity and setting the tone. And when you have the you have them at a level, you know, you know how to get in and out of records. To what, if it's gonna get too rowdy, it's like let me get up out of that. But in the same tone, I still got that one record in pocket to say, you know what? If I need to change the temperature real quick, let me. So like you said, if I'm playing Lil John, B I B I, and they getting a little rowdy. And when I see they about to thump and it's about to go, or oh, clip, that's my hood. They they can right go there. I got lovers and friends over here real quick. I got some, I got something in the pocket. So it's just in case, I'm gonna go here real quick to, to, to simmer them down real quick. So, you know, but but that that's the fun part of being a DJ. Where you can you can you can feed off the energy of the crowd, you can gauge the crowd, and you 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 do it's it's like playing chess. Mm. You, you're gonna you're gonna let me test this, let me see. Let me see if this is gonna make them go there. Okay. You know, knocking your buck is still a, a fight record. It's you know? still a fight record. All it's, that it's crime still, option. Yeah, it's, it's still, it's it's still a fight record. Are, you are, know. What are your thoughts that they don't make fight records no more? They just make like uh, shooting records, kill records, <laughs> drill records. Drill, the, I mean, the drill, drill, the drill vibe is, is is that vibe. It's hard to dance to. You got, it's hard, very hard to dance. You got one dance to it. You see the but, you see the, you see the real shooters get out out their seats. Uh, point no. gun fingers at when, yeah. when, they, when them songs. Yeah, so that, that's 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 the challenge. But you know, you, I think music is, music's so well versus like as as a DJ, you got to be extremely creative, and just I feel like in any crowd, there's pockets, there's people that want to hear drills, there's people that want to hear knocking your bucks, there's people that want to hear some R and B shit. So you got to cater to all the masses and know how to creatively blend it all in. That's you know, that's that's the thing. I, I, and for me, it's like I've developed that skill set to be able to. Rock a crowd. I'm a party DJ, nice. you know, not not just a tour DJ. I'm a party DJ. Like I love to see people put their phones down and say, "Oh shit, this nigga's killing it. Yeah. He got us going." Ah, that's real. Let me ask you, uh, what are your thoughts when you see uh, like a Johnny Damn D bringing the old Dallas swag back, uh, that old Boogie era back? Do you feel like that's an era that needs to come back to Dallas? I, I think an era, it was an era that wasn't appreciated the most, Man, and, and didn't get and didn't get the limelight that it needed. The challenge is going to be bringing it back. But you know, I struggle with the Dallas Boogie movement in that because if if you're gonna bring it back, Dallas needs to support it. Dallas needs to embrace it. We talked about this many many years ago. We still talk about it. You have other markets that really support 
their artists and support their movements and their music. And sometimes Dallas has fall, fell, fell short because everybody wants to be the star and doesn't know, you know, everybody wants to be Nelly, but nobody wants to be a lunatic. Somebody got to be a lunatic and wait your turn and say, you know what? He got it. He got so we're going to push him. And when he get on, we'll get on. That's crazy. I seen uh, Juke in, in Memphis like really making a comeback. So mm -hmm. even the old Triple Six records, even the new records, is making a comeback. They're they're really embracing that culture. Yeah. And I'm like, Dallas had that. Do you feel like because Dallas had the boogie era, Atlanta had the snap era, mm -hmm. and Atlanta really embraced the snap era mm -hmm. to where it, you know turned into something else? Do you feel like we killed our own movement? What are your thoughts? Because you was kind of in the. In the you know. I feel like not that we killed our own movement. We let certain people come into the market and take it. You know, Damn. the Dougie record. Oh, yeah. Got stolen. Yeah. And technically, Lil Will co-signed it by being on a video. Now, he, now we had him on the couch, and he was, he said, Man, I would have never did that the way it played out. But he kind of co-signed it by being on the video, and now you see people asking about the Dougie, and he said, oh, you mean Cali Swag this Right. Week? He like, what? He like, right. what? Right. And that's like disrespect to the city. So it's like one of those things where if you, if you, if it's yours, own it, embrace it, you know. It's certain records like Mr. Hit That Ho and 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 the Tr Trilly Prince Rick. That, oh yeah, come those on. those spread your legs is still you know yeah it still go it's, it's, it's still go. You know, T, T Cash tell you this we had you know I I have had many conversations with back in the day where he hated performing that record. I'm like niggas, you ride that record to the wheels fall off. To the wheels fall off because niggas in New York don't know about that shit, but they will if you keep riding that wave. Like I still play that record to this day. Till, till I could be in Cancun, I could be in Jamaica, I could be in New York. I play it because now you look at an artist like B King, TikTok, <laughs> resurrect his career, and people think he's a new artist. And those are records I was playing in Beamers. People think he's a new artist. Those Man, are, that records, be amazing those to are me. records I broke in Beamers. I'm telling you. And he, we, we laugh and joke about it. He's like, yeah, nigga, I've been doing they think I'm new. Yeah, because nobody heard it. It was regional. So the, mo the movement can still, it can, but now if you're going to bring it back, support it, embrace it, and make it move the engine. Now, we have so many different tech, you know, different different things to help that. If you're gonna bring up a, a Dallas boogie movement back, be heavy on that TikTok. Get, be get on the TikTok. Be, you use the tools that are out there now to make shit go. Cause it ain't it ain't just about the music no more. It's about what people are gonna do with that song. And it could be a 15 second snippet of a record that makes your shit just go all of a sudden now. Like this is a new record. Now that shit is 20 years old. <clears throat> but to them, it's new. No facts. Oh, uh, and let me ask you, uh, you know, even with Yella, you know, he was on a, a podcast with, um, of course, a million dollars worth of game mm -hmm. with Wallow and uh, Gilly. Um, and he said, they asked him, like, hey, how long, I mean, how much money can somebody make off a hit record, like one hit record? And, you know, Yella, he said it, like, he put a number to it, like, man, you could probably make like six million dollars, you know, over the course of the record um, from just touring. And, you know, if you really ride that record, how many artists do you feel might give up on what is a hit record. And if they do have a hit record, should they be like, I'm tired of, you know, cause they do get tired of performing the same record. Can't. But you can't, like, I wa I watched, Sir Mix a lot. I, I watched Yella, I watched Yella and Trap Boy single-handedly push their music re and from market to market. I was bumping them in LA, bumping them in Vegas, and they, oh, yeah. they, they was working the records. They was, they was pushing the records. And, and when they knew they had, you know, when Yella knew he had a hit, he ran with it. That's why to this day, if he get if he get booked somewhere, he's going he's gonna perform. That's on me. Like he may be tired of it, but he, he gets it. But it's one of those things where you gotta put in that work. And whatever, whatever might seem old to you, it's not old to somebody else. Again, I just got off tour with Fifth. He's performing records that are 20 years old. 20 years and we got old. kids to grandmas singing it word for word. Why would you stop singing, go shorty, it's your birthday? If that's what got you to where you at today, I'm gonna keep singing that shit until. I can't sing it no more. Should they keep the same energy when they sing it? Absolutely. Okay, Why not? <laughs> keep, that, yeah, keep, keep that, that same act energy. Like, that's just, act like, like it's brand, brand new. <laughs> nah, for real. Yeah. Let me ask you, um, you know, when when 50 got shot, um, when you heard about it, you mm -hmm. know, growing up with him, mm -hmm. what were your thoughts when you heard like, damn, 50 got shot? Because mind you, I don't think a lot of people, first of all, did you know about it before his signing with Eminem? No. Like, did you hear about it? Okay. I mean, the, street, the streets was talking, but you know, Obviously, like I said, my mother and his grandmother were church guests, so I'm deeply rooted with that. So we heard about it in the streets, and you know, you hear all the who, who did this and who did that. You know, when the boys got to it, it's like I saw my guy down, yeah. and it's like I see where he was trying to go, and I see I, the industry or people in the industry didn't want him to get to where he's at today. 
And it's one of those things where, you know, by the grace of the man above, he persevered that. You know, ain't too many people that can say they got, you know, hit that many times yeah. and he's here to tell about it, but now being the mogul that he is. So it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, I'm glad the space that he was in then, it didn't, it didn't take him back. You know, it was one of those things where you can get, you can, the, the mindset once you, once you survive something like that is like, I'm, I'm, I'm on, I'm on that. His mindset was, let me get out of that and focus on my career. And, and that's when the M&Ms and Dre said, you know what, we're going to grab you up. Whereas, you know, he could have went back to the streets. That's facts. You know, he could have went by the streets. Very, you know, Boo Boo was a street guy. Yeah. But when you have a calling and you got a praying grandmother and, and people in your circle is different and you know you got a gift, the gift supersedes the the, the other stuff that, that can drag you down. There's there's the enemy and then there's the man above. And he chose he chose the right path and look where he is now. So at the time of what songs, you know, again, because you know you you knew him as he was a kid mm-hmm. when he was Boo Boo. Mm-hmm. Did you know, were you on them when, when like, How to Rob? Were you already on them? I was just a music fan at the time. Remember, at this time, we don't have any kind of connection. Right. You know, he's just my childhood friend. I'm seeing the glow, the glow up like, okay. And I'm sitting back as a fan like, wow, that's my childhood friend. He got a song called How to, like, he's really on it. But, you know, at that time, you got other artists from, from Queens that are on too. But it's like, I'm, I'm rooting for him. Like, okay. So, you know, again, when we finally reconnected, my first thing to him was like, yo, I'm proud of you. That was, that, was, that was the first thing I said to him. Like, yo, I'm proud of you. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, yo, from where we come from to see where you are today, it's like, I'm, I'm just genuinely proud of you because we got it out the mud. He got it out the mud. So to see that glow up, it's just like, wow. What was, for you, what was your first 50 Cent hit? For me? Yeah, what song were you like, oh, shit? I mean. Was it the, the out, out the gate? Was I mean. All the, all, 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 I mean, honestly, all the mixtape shit for me was, was <laughs> that. I, Fifth had the mixtape game on lock. On. You know, he, he changed the game with that when he was taking people's records and making it his own. You know, he had a call, he had a song called "I Love Your Cheddar," which is the remix of LL Cool J's "I Love You Better." Yeah. He, like it. So when he was snatching niggas' songs, I'm like, this nigga Fifth is creative. So he had all queens playing his music, and to the point where it got on radio, it's like you got artists that looking like, yo, he jacked my record. But this is five. He's going. He's going jack and take it. But he changed the mixtape game, yeah. you know. And so for me, that was my fan. Like I'm, I'm fanning out. Like yo, this nigga's just he's creative. So I, I'm gonna put you on the spot because you know right now Eminem is getting a lot of flack for what you know. Uh, Hold on, my bad. Right, Sorry about that. All right, my bad, y'all. All right. So um, as I was asking, as far as uh, uh, Eminem. Um, has recently come under flag, man. Benzino tried to put out some old, 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 before the Rap Olympics type music mm-hmm. where Eminem was using the N-word and talking about, a, uh, I guess, a black girl that he had a, a you know, a fallen out with mm-hmm. and he put it on record. And uh, people were throwing flack at 50 for not just, you know, res- you know, hey, 50, respond to everything else. Won't you respond to, to, your, to your business partner, your friend, uh, Eminem, what his situation was. What are your thoughts on that as far as, you know, you know, the love and art and war, you know, you know how it goes, 48 laws of power type shit. It's a reach. And and in my in my opinion on it, it's like if if M is part of the culture. Come on. And Come on. and let's be honest. How many, how many Caucasian people do we know say nigga? Hey, if anybody you get know, a pass. If anybody get a pass, it's gonna be M. Shit. You know, and, 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 and the thing is, is like, it's one of those things where I, I wouldn't expect Fifth to say nothing because one, that's his best friend, and two, like, Fifth, is, he don't mind his business real quick. Like, I'm not gonna get entangled in that. It's like one of those things, but it's like, it, it's a reach. I feel like people reach and they want clickbait to figure out, you know, how to get the energy. And it's like certain things you just don't respond to. I, I probably didn't, didn't even respond to this at this point. Like, it's one of the things where it's just like, Eminem let, is let Eminem. It, let it pass. Yeah, Eminem is Eminem. You know, he's part of the culture. He's embraced the Can culture. Can you cancel Eminem? Is that possible? I mean, well, I, anything's possible, but. Like it, I mean, it'll take a lot more than that. He 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 paved the way and shaped the culture of hip hop. Come on, man. You know, aside from what he did for, for Fifty, you know, he's a hell of an artist, a hell of a hip hop artist. And you can't take you can't take that away from him. Yeah. You know, he ain't diamond for no reason. Like, let me ask you, who do you put on your top five lyricists? I don't want to call it rappers, just lyricists. Top five lyricists. KRS One, no order. Yeah, no, no order. No order. Yeah, let's not do it. No KRS One, Rakim, Nas, uh, Fifty. And that's off the. That's off the. That's off the mixtape. 
And whereas four, um, come on, Pac. Oh, as a lyricist, Pac. You know, storyteller. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna get flack for this, and I'm gonna say it right now in front of you. Um, I once said, uh, and I, I kind of still still stick to it. I said Nicki Minaj is a better lyricist than Pac. What? <laughs> now, now, now. Now, don't get me wrong. Oh, I now, love Onika, and she from Southside. Yeah, yeah, she from Southside as well. You know, I... Now, because, let me say, let me, let me say, because I know they're going to probably eat me for this, but Pac is one of the greatest storytellers, one of the greatest poets ever. When it comes to lyricism, Pac don't even have to rhyme to me. Like, he could just... He don't got to rhyme. I, I personally look at lyricism as wordplay, rhyme, mm-hmm. schemes, uh, double entendres, things like, mm-hmm. things like that. I just felt Nikki was better at that than Tupac Shakur. My personal opinion. She in my, top, she, she in my top 10. <laughs> I just can't say Nikki over Pac. I can't, I, I, and I, I say I, again, I, not I, a rapper, I'm just saying not, just as a as when it comes to putting words and, you know, doing the rules of lyricism, I guess, whatever. Yeah. And I let the I let the people decide what lyricism is. Yeah. But to me, again, I said Nikki is a better lyricism writer when it comes to the do do. I mean, it's a lot. You know, even if you look at my list, I just I just spewed out. I can still name some people. I guess. Excuse me. I'm looking at from lyricists and just overall creativity, and and be able to make records. You got a lot of lyricists out here that can't make a record. You know, so if you want to talk about lyricists, I mean, obviously the J. Coles, the, the Kendrick Lamar's, those are true lyricists. But I'm looking at it from a, a, a different scope. But I mean, Onika's a beast. I mean, you know. I, the, the Onika, yeah. you know, and the early Nicki Minaj, and even even his, his recent album, she's back to it. But when she went really pop, you know, it's like mm, okay. What, what what are your thoughts on um? What are your thoughts on uh? What are your thoughts on Nicki Minaj and um and uh, Megan Thee Stallion going at it? Seeing female rappers making diss tracks, and they're both they both went like number one. Uh, they both. Now what are your thoughts? And when you sit went for. As a hip hop connoisseur, mm-hmm. uh, what are your thoughts when you see them go at it? But the records are doing numbers. But you know, I don't know what may come of it. It's no different than Big Daddy Kane and LL Cool J. I mean, it's, the history of hip hop is you always gonna have somebody wanting to battle or trump somebody else. Mm-hmm. That's just the reality of it. I think it's 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 the art of war. It's healthy. You know, once it go once it goes past or beyond the music, then it gets a little it gets a little sketchy at that point. I think if we keep it on on the music level. And less low blows, then you know, yeah. it, it, it works well. It, it's 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 the nature of the beast. Do you, you automatically know? side with Nikki from being from your hood? I side with the music. Okay, there you go. He said I side. I with side with the music. Yeah, who, who, who's putting out the hits? Damn, all that's how I yeah, side with the I music. I side with the music. You know. Now, if you if you ask that same question when it comes to Fifty Cent and anybody else, I'm siding with Fifty Cent. I'm side side all day long. So that's outside the music. Who who do you feel like was Fifty Cent's greatest op? I mean, and I, when I say op, I mean you know he's always in jest when he plays with you know from Mayweather to Ross to who was his greatest op? Do you feel like his greatest Joker to his Batman? Is there one? Yeah, I'm about to say is there I mean, like who, I, I, you know anyone did Floyd Floyd did an okay job. Uh, Ross, I think he threw the talent a little early. Then well, that shit dates back a while, so I, I fuck I don't know. Um, Fifty kind of gets him out of there quick. Listen. It's one of those things where musically, he's you know you can sit and, and talk that talk, but if you haven't sold the, the amount of records he sold, there's really no conversation. Now, if you want to get into the space of pettiness, I'm gonna give the edge to my guy because he 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 loves the art of war. This is what he does. This is you know this is how we grew up. That's the makeup of it. You know, if 50, 50 was the guy in the hood playing the dice games and he made sure he had the bank and he would talk you out of your money. You know, he's gonna side bet you all day long and I still got the bank, I'm gonna win this and I'm win all these side bets. So if you're ready for that kind of war, then by all means, but my bet is on five all day long. When you see, um, uh, you know, the Diddy situation uh, and Fifth say, I'm making a documentary from hmm. what you know, is he really making a movie about Diddy's situation? Why not? He said, "Why not? He it's, got all the tools available." It's, it's all it's 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 a it's a it's a very important story to get out. Hey, <laughs> and and my guys, you know, he he has the lane and the platform to put out great content. Hey, and you know, and he also said that if he did do it, if he did do it, he the it would benefit the victims. 
Now, yeah, so there's, said that. There, yeah. There, there, there's purpose behind it. There is. You know, we're focused on positivity. Yeah, no, there is. So if there's a if there's a point to put it out and 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 the tools to make it, you know, if he does do it, it's going to benefit the ones that have been, you know, victimized by this situation. That's real. Yeah, that's real. That was um, my that was my political correct. Yeah, answer, political correct. Answer. Yeah, yeah. So like let that. me ask you then. Um, you know, Fifty just opened up. Uh, a studio in Shreveport. Yes, all roads lead to Shreveport. Yeah, oh, I was, and when I seen that about a year or so ago, as this this facility is about to, buy, I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I, you know, I haven't seen someone. You know, of course, Atlanta is. You know, that's, they make Marvel movies over there. Mm-hmm. LA is. You know, Hollywood's Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, he's even gonna really try to bring the TV business, movie business to Shreveport. All and, of it. And I was like, it, and it's crazy because that's how my thing. I'm like, that's smart as shit. But also, you know, there's some barriers. But then I'm starting thinking like, well, no, um. You know, uh, New Orleans has been a movie hub forever. Mm-hmm. And it's honestly, you're, you're kind of siphoning the business saying, nah, we're going to kind of use all of this. Mm-hmm. You still get the same breaks and everything else. Uh, what are your thoughts on him building that massive facility to house all type of TV shows and all type green light? Green light uh, gang. Green light gang. All green light that. gang. It's, it's, it's incredible. We just talked about this over the weekend while I was in Vegas. Incredible. Um, again, one of the situations where I'm just proud. I, I, I watched the man make chess moves and... You know, the analogy or simplicity of it is same thing Tyler Perry did in Atlanta, you know. But when you talk about the BMFs, the Raising Canaan's, the Power Universe, all those things and all the new content that he's coming out with being housed in, in a city like Shreveport that is known for what casinos and something. It's one of those, it's one of those things where when you got a guy like 50 coming into the market, it not only brings new jobs, new opportunities for people in the market because he's made it very clear. I'm not. Bring, I'm not outsourcing people to come into the market. I want to hire within. So it's, 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 it's employing people in the market, people that may be struggling or have the skill sets that just have not had the opportunities that are, are afforded to them. So here's some new opportunities. And now here's an opportunity to recharge and gentrify the market. Nice. So, you know, sky's the limit when it comes to Streetport. And, um, you know, I don't know when this is going to air, but April 19th is the, is, is the, is the, is the ribbon cutting and, and Streetport, we're on the way. April 19th. April 19th. Man, that, that, that's two hours of throw. I might go and make two a Two-hour drive. I might, I might make a trip, goddamn. It's, it's, it's going to be a vibe. So, But I'm excited. I'm excited for the market. I'm excited for the opportunities. I'm excited for the content that's going to come out of that. Again, some of your favorite shows that are on right now are going to be shot in Shreveport. That's, that speaks volumes. That speaks volumes. Um, What is your favorite show in the power universe or even outside the power universe oh i mean obviously I, I i grew up with the with the original one with ghost and and, and tommy come on now. but the evolution of it has been incredible i mean you know michael rainey I, aka Tariq, has, yeah. has blossomed into this incredible star so so that version of power or ghost as they call it now is is incredible but now i'm a fan favorite of raising canaan raising canaan just you ended this shit it, man. It's, just, it's, it's that has taken a hold i'm so i'm looking at that like but then at one point, when the Tommy joint dropped, I was like, oh, this is cool. Now, but it was like, but now, this last season, I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> then, you cannot like BMF. You cannot like, like BMF. So I, don't, I don't have a favorite. It's just like, I just wait for it. I, I sit back and be like, okay, when's the next one coming on? Is there a story that you would like for him to tell that you would like, you personally would love to see uh, 50 Cent's production uh, company uh, put forward? Well, the new one that he's getting ready to do, um, that's no secret, he's getting ready to do the Eminem story. Yeah, I saw that. So I that's, that. you know, I'm interested to see that because obviously him and him have the ties they have, that whole intricate part of it and j- just his rate is his, his rising from the Detroit scene. And, you know, I'm interested to see how he puts that together. And, you know, as you know, you've seen the content he puts out. He's not going to half-ass it. It's going nice. to be top notch. So to see it come into fruition, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And I think he's he's most excited about that as well. You know, you got to get the you got to get the green light from him to say, do my story. So best friends or not, M can be like, no. Now it's crazy because, you know, you saw Taraji P. Henson, you know, talk about her payment woes and then 50 was like, hey, man, you come over here. We we got you. He recruiting. Yeah, yeah, I I recruit. You know, the thing is, and anybody will tell you, if you work for Fifth, he's going to pay you and pay you what you're worth. Just do your job. That's the, that's the mind. If you do your job, he's gonna pay you what you're worth. So Mary's getting the bag. You know, if Taraji come over here, you know, we we passed that empire stuff. You know, when, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, yeah. when empire was on. Yeah, you know, yeah. But again, again, the art of war. Fifth had his show going on. They had at the same time, and it and, was back and forth. Yeah, he's episode. like, like y'all I, 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 I got to take y'all out. You know, but it, it, it's all it's all. Him out. <laughs> we 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 could be friends after that, but let me do what I got to do. But the, you know, 
he keeps it 100. Like, if he sees somebody as talented as Taraji complaining about not being paid or not being, you know, getting her, her just justifications that she, you know, he's going to pay you what you're worth. Just do the job. Just do the job. I yeah. remember it was uh, Lil Meech. He was on an interview saying, like, he honestly was lost about what he was supposed to be doing in life outside of being uh, Big Me's son. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until 50 came through and just like really saved his career, like put him through acting school to say, like, no, now you're an actor. Now you, now the, now you're a content creator. Now you're, now your brand is big. Your own brand is big. Now it's, a, it's a blessing to have somebody to come and step into your life or step into your world and disrupt it in a positive way. That's right. And change the trajectory of where, where you thought you was going. You wanted, you started off thinking you was going to be this and he comes in and he sees something in you and says, nah, I want, like Meech. Me, he put Meech in acting class. He saw something else in him. Yeah, I want you to play your dad, but before you do that, I need you to really hone in on this and, 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 and learn the craft of it because when I put you out on the, on the forefront, you're going to become a star. That's somebody that's visionary. That's somebody that sees something in you that you don't see. It's, it's no different than him reaching back to me and saying, you know what, you ready now. Come do this tour. That was a big step for him. You know, and no shade to the person that was there before me. That, that was his DJ for 10 years. Did he tell you what happened with that situation? It's just one of those things where you outgrow a situation, a lot of mistakes is made, and, and I'll say this, and, and nobody, everybody knows this, Fifth is a perfectionist. He wants perfection at all times. If, if you gotta work an hour and a half, work that hour and a half to the highest power. And the thing is, is that he's a machine, you know? It's not just 50 Cent on tour performing in front of 30,000, 100,000. He's doing that. He's in the gym two times, two times a day. He's writing scripts. He's reading scripts. He's brokering new deals. He's signing deals with NBA teams. And that's, so for me, I'm jumping on the tour and I'm looking like I've been lazy all this time. I gotta stop. From what you see I, working? I gotta, I gotta step my game up. It changed my mindset. So that four months that I was with him was the blessing that I never thought I needed. Like I came back on a different mission. Like I gotta be in the gym. I gotta work out. I gotta. You, you, it changes your mindset because this is a guy that does not stop. And if you if you want to be to that level or close to it, you gotta you gotta work on that same level or try to outwork them. Good luck with that one, but try to outwork them. Like, and that and that's that's the mindset. Like, so it's like if you don't have that heart and that grind, you might not you might not succeed the way you want to succeed. For me, being around that guy, I got a whole different mindset now. So let me just ask you this: uh, Was your first ep for was your first set around the time after he threw that mic in the crowd? Was it? two days after. Two days after. Okay, just make. Okay, just make yeah. sure. I just want. I just that, want to that, so, 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 <laughs> so after. Yeah, the debacle happened with the yeah. with the with the with the mic situation, and then after that was one more show, and then I got the call. I was actually in oh. Dubai, and I got the call, and they wanted me. To, they wanted me to fly to LA. You was in I Dubai. I was in Dubai. Shit. And okay. I could I couldn't make it to LA, so we figured out the timing wise, and I met them in Seattle, and I jumped on a tour in September, and the rest is history. There you go. There yeah. you go. Blessings. Blessings on blessings. blessings. I mean, blessings, yeah. you, you can't call this shit, man. You nah. know what I'm saying? My, child, my childhood friend saying, come on, jump on this tour and celebrate the 20th anniversary of my of my Get Rich or Die tribe. It was like, come you can't you can't draw it up any other way. How How was uh, Uncle Murder in, That's my in, guy. in person? Yeah, how, how, how is he in, in, in Brooklyn? Bro he's all he's the a way. Brooklyn nigga. All the way. He's a Brooklyn nigga. Whoa, he's a Brooklyn nigga. <laughs> Still to this day. But mur mur Murder, yeah, yo. It's one of those things like, I was a new kid coming in. You know, yeah. Oh, Fifth, like I said, me and Fifth was, was that's my guy. But me, Yale and I grew up in the same neighborhood, but we we didn't really know each other like that. You know, we just know of each other. And and murder was was new to me. So I'm the new guy coming in, but the energy was right. You know, when you bring in positive energy, the mindset is like, okay, and we we clicked off the rip. But murder and Yale, those are my guys. Sure, they man. held me down and they kept me, they kept me on point. You know, if I had any moments when I was fucking up, they quickly be like, nigga, you fucking up. See, oh, on, on, on a, in a Brooklyn way. <laughs> Brooklyn way. Nigga, tell you in a Brooklyn You fucking up, nigga. Like, yeah. okay, my bad, nigga. Yeah, no, nah, shout out Murder, man. And tell yeah. you, man, I'm going to let you handle it, but man, tell you, yeah, yeah, we want him on the couch, man. Definitely. We're going to have to talk to New York? Up. Yeah, he likes to be on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know. I, I see he loved it. Him and Black got such a rapport. I said, oh, yeah, we got to get Yayo down. Yeah, Yayo's yeah, my Texas. guy. Yeah, Southside all day. Uh, I got to get your th take on this, man, because, um, you know, you're kind of in the, well, not kind of, you are the industry. Um, and I want to know how you would have moved. Uh, when you see a situation where, um, and again, shout out Yellow Beezy. When you see Yellow Beezy confront, uh, I forget the guy's name, but the Jewish guy. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he's asking him to scratch. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, uh, Yellow got everything to lose. This is probably, I don't know what he has to lose, but mm -hmm. he has everything to use. 
the way he handled that situation, um, what advice would you, what would you have done? What advice would you give him? Like, how would you have moved in that scenario, knowing the status you're at versus what's happening on the other side? In any scenario like that, I feel like there's always a distraction or disruption being thrown your way. And we get to a point in our careers and in life in general where you got to realize you just need to walk away. When it boils down to it, just 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 walk away because that's an energy that you don't want. And 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 the quick thought is you don't think about the repercussions of it or the or the fallout of it. But for me, where I'm at now, it's like I always think about my wife, my kids. Like, how does how if I go left, how do I recover from that? And it's not worth it to me. I want to go home. I want to be able to go home and see my wife and my kids and 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 be good. I don't want that bad, as they call it, bad juju. Like, I'm good. I walk away. Now, you know, again, a man gonna be a man, but we have a we have a habit of letting our pride supersede what the true energy needs to be. I, I walk away from the situation all day long because it's just not worth it to me. Yeah. Now, if it's something that needs to be handled, then yeah, I'm I'm gonna handle it. If, if if it gets to that point where it has to be handled, yeah. But I'm gonna try to avoid that at all costs because sometimes it's just it's just not worth it. It's not. That's facts. It just That's ain't, facts. It, it ain't it ain't worth it. And and I know I know Yellow personally, he got his kid, like you, 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 you live. You've already had a scare. You've already had situations happen. Walk away. Just it ain't worth it to me. Yeah, it's funny because um, it did get the attention mm -hmm. that who I don't know who wanted the attention, but it still got if the blogs covered it. Everybody's on it. Um, so can it be manipulated into a positive on Yellow's end or even the the other guys doing interviews and shit? I'm like, oh shit, because yeah, that's what he wanted. He yeah, probably, that was, that's probably his motive, like. And, and that's the thing. Like I said, certain energies thrown at you to disrupt what you got going on or the path that you want. And we can get suckered into it real quick because that person has an agenda and a motive. And my thing is that I, I, I'm all about protecting my, I've been in that space. Now I'm all about protecting my energy. You know, you even hear Fifth talk about it all the time. We, we focus on positivity. Like, you know, we can have fun and games and, and talk shit on social media all day long. And there's another, but when it boils out to it, like we got people in place you got security in place to handle situations like that where you don't get confronted with scenarios like that because somebody has a phone out. Somebody, there's always somebody that wants that energy and it's like, it's not worth it to me because you know, all press ain't good press, sometimes it, it is, but I'm gonna keep my name out the mud on it. It's like, I, I don't need it and I don't want it. Okay, let me ask you um, personally, uh, you know, seeing, being on tour with 50 and seeing what he kind of does and goes through to kind of just his life. Mm -hmm. um, do you would you want that type of fame, notoriety? Would you want that type of level of attention on you with, you know, wife and kids and things like that? Could you maneuver through that? Do you feel like you're in a comfortable place where like, nah, there's no amount of money that will want to like I like my I can still walk in Walmart. Mm -hmm. Like, would you want to handle that type of energy? You know, fame come with a cost. And 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 it's it's a, it's a heavy price. You know, your, your your comfort level does go away quick. You know, um, prior to me even going to roll with Fib, I walked I walked around on the edge. You know, there's certain situations that's happened here in the market that has that has me on edge. So I think that goes with with anything that you got going on. You know, jealousy and envy is gonna follow you when you have a movement going on. And sometimes people gravitate to that and they see you doing certain things and they want what you got and they desire and envy what you got. It's like you just have to move move accordingly. Do I want that level of fame? Probably not. Um you know, because I've I've witnessed Fifth want to be the regular guy. You know, <laughs> I've, I've, want to I've, I've bumped into Fifth at our hotel downstairs looking for a phone charger. I'm like, nigga, what you doing out here? My phone charger died. Like, nigga, go upstairs. <laughs> yeah, nigga, get somebody to. <laughs> it's one. Of, yeah, it's like, nigga, why are you down here? Like, I will bring my charger. Nah, but man. so I, I think when any artist or anybody in that in that stature wants to be regular at times, you hear, you see people all the time that want to disguise themselves. So do I want that? No. Does it know? Do I know it comes with territory? Yeah. I mean, I just came off a, a world tour, 29 countries. I'm signing autographs for the first time. And I'm like, how'd you get that picture? Where'd you dig that picture up at? Like That's really random people and they find a picture. I'm like, damn. So it's like, you got to prepare yourself for that. Like we, me and my wife talk about all the time, like the social media shit changes. You got the bots coming out, people sliding your DMs, doing weirdo shit. It's like, it comes with the territory, comes with it. but you got to move accordingly, you know? And for me, it's like, I just move accordingly. Like, so I'm glad I can still be in the Walmarts, but we've gone to the Walmarts and been recognized. And then my wife be looking like, nigga, you still Kareem Thompson. Yeah, I know. I know. Talk you got you got to have that person around you, your team, your partner, to keep you grounded. That's the thing. I stay grounded and I stay humble. 
There you go. Um, that's very important. And I'm, I'm gonna lean on that because um, someone watching this, you know, you being a DJ, just, you know, of course, you know, all throughout Dallas, uh, going on world tours with 50. For an artist who is right now just sitting at home saying, man, my mama said I got a voice and I, mm -hmm. she likes my song and therefore I wanna maybe one day pursue this rap thing. Um, what advice would you give that guy starting from zero mm -hmm. with no funds, just his mama like his music mm -hmm. to get to a level of uh, 50 Cent? Is that luck? Is it a chance uh, a lot of things have to come and fall in line? Cause you know, 50 got shot, Yella got shot. A mm -hmm. lot of things happened where you're like, whoa, that propelled situation where you can't call that. Mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you give or what, what do you see how someone could go from zero to a level of, you know, you're selling out crowds in London? I mean, you look at a 50 or you look at a yellow in both, in both scenarios, both of them got shot, but they both believed in themselves. When nobody else did, they believed in themselves. Like I said, I told you, I, I bumped into yellow in various cities, pushing his music, running around, you know, introducing himself to other artists that are already on, saying, this is me, this is what I got going on. Same thing with Fifth with the mixtape game. Like you have to believe in yourself when the boys are to it. If nobody else believes in you, you gotta believe in you. If your mama say you jamming, great. Now, don't make her a liar. You gotta go out there and grind it out and make other people believe in it, you know, and, and work, work your music, work your craft, work, work with the DJs, go to the strip clubs, get, get people behind your music and, and have that movement. Yeah, it takes a lot of money to, to, to go, but if you hot, we got so many tools now that can, you know, you can become an internet sensation real quick if you got that movement going on. So, but I think first and foremost, it's all about believing in yourself. Man, that's real. You know, now if it's some bullshit, somebody gonna tell you at some point, nigga, that's some bullshit. But I've seen some bullshit niggas get on. It, it happens. Now, will that sustain? It's one of those things where, do you wanna be on? And you know, I have met plenty of artists from here to everywhere that just want their song on the radio. That can happen any day, all day. You could be hot enough to get your song on radio right now. That right. can happen. What are you gonna do to keep it on radio? That's the question. So, <laughs> if you got a hot song right now, right? It's everybody loving, it's playing in strip clubs, all the DJ, hot DJs is playing it, and now you've made it a radio. You got a team that's gonna call the radio every day and say, play this record, play this record, play. Now, that's the grind. Yeah. You can get it on there all day long. How are you gonna keep it on there? How are you gonna grow your fan base? How are you gonna keep it organic and make people believe in you and wait for the next record and the next record and the next record? That's your work. Do you feel, you've been on both 97.9 and K104 mm -hmm. side of things. Uh, are they, are the radios able to break records? I think the streets break records first. Streets, so. Radio's uh, late. Radio's late. Radio's late. And that's just speaking for the Dallas market, let's just say, because. Uh, yeah, market, other, like, other, market, other markets, are, you know, other markets are probably more organic and, they, and they, they're more in tune with the streets. But I've been in this market for a long time. I've, I've seen records grow out of strip clubs to, to the, the major clubs or the lounges and then radio catches on. Now, in the same, in the same tote, radio can kill a record. It's one of those things where, oh. and, and as an artist, you have to have the skill set to make it go uh, two or three times. What I mean by that is, you know, if you got a uh, true story, Rich Homie Kwan, um, type of way. Oh yeah, remember that record? Yeah, it's fucking hit. That record was two years old before it got it, it blew up. Two years old in Atlanta. Yeah. But when it hit All Star in Houston, I, that's when that's when it that's took when off. It, uh, it got so hot that Atlanta had to start playing it all over again. That's how you work a record. So, like I said, when we talk about like the, the t cash, like, you might get tired of hearing your record and, and performing your record because it's been played so many times in the clubs in your region. It's been played on K104, 979 for so long that at the point where they don't play it anymore, but that does not mean in Atlanta or in Houston or in New York or anywhere else, they've heard it. And, and Beat King is a prime example of that. Like I said, all those hot records that he has that got hot on TikTok last year, year before last, are records that I played 10 years ago in Beamers. Oh, that's real. So it's all about working the record and oh, believing in the record and don't get tired of the record. Artists are always gonna get tired of their own music. When you get tired of it, if it's that, one, if it's that record that gets you booked, keep performing it. Lil Ronnie, prime example, he gonna perform through that ass in a circle. Oh, nigga. He gonna perform a New Year's resolution. He's, why? Because that's the record that's sustained. Biggest he can facts. put out all the new music. They're going to they love that new music, too. But the boys up to it, 
that's the core record is that people was like, I booked you for this shit. You run with it. I bet you, we won't tell you, I'm tired of playing. I'm, I'm going to perform that shit till the wheels fall off. When you got the Kardashians performing, throw their ass in the circle, and Beyonce, nigga, Come I will now. never stop singing that song if I'm him. Never. Come on now. The biggest facts. God damn. God damn. Well, shit. No, that's, a, that's as free game as it could get. Um, you know, uh, this music business is um, it's finicky, but, you know, there's so many success stories that I don't want people to get discourage yeah. too early. You got to stay consistent even in what it's ebbs and flows. You know, even when it's down, it's going to be ups. Um, Real quick, you, you got you got you got to have the, re, the ability to reinvent yourself. Even as a DJ, I've had to reinvent myself many times. Before I got on tour fifth, people probably wasn't even checking for DJ Chaotic. One, I'm too expensive. You can't book me in this market. And two, people was like, oh, he's a, he's an OG now. Now I'm a hot ass OG. <laughs> See, now I'm a hot ass OG, for real. And now like you I'm said, scorching. Like you said, before chaotic, it was hypnotic. God damn. I mean, it's just so, so many. God. But I get it. It's like you know, I can't sit back and get this grown about it. Like you got a lot of young young kids and young, young talent coming in as DJs. They might have the same skill sets as me, but they they move the needle, and I and I respect that. I got I got a lot of a, a lot of I give praise to a lot of the young DJs that are doing it. There's some that I don't get praise to because they you know the short changing. If you if you if you shortchanging yourself, you shortchanging the game. That's you nice. know, it, it's a certain there's a certain level of DJs and what you should be charging in the clubs, and and that part of the game has changed, and that's worldwide. That you know, the same complaints I've had in mar- in this market, they have the same complaints in New York. So it's no different when you got DJs that are undercutting DJs and, and fucking up the game, but the ones that are not doing it and they have the skill sets and they appreciate the art form of it, I applaud them suiting all day long. Like I said, even the promoters I hear from the club owners, niggas wasn't checking for me. Now, it's, you can check for me all day long. You, you can, probably, you, you can you, check. You, you can check. check. I'm I, moving. It's shaking right now. I think the going rate, and I don't know. I, again, I'm not a DJ. I don't know the rates. Uh, but I think DJs per night, would you say like what, three to eight hundred dollars? Uh, and just rent your random club. If you, if you doing what you're supposed to do, you should be in that five to eight hundred range. Okay, yeah. There's some that's probably doing three, but and and no and no and those I get it. If you're doing yeah, if you're doing if you doing a few hours a few hours here and there, multiple yeah. nights, get your, get your, get your vibe on it. For me, I, you know, if if a person reaches out to me and and or a promoter reaches out to me and says, "Okay, I got two hundred for you," <laughs> I'm gonna sit at home and I'm gonna drink that Branson. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shout out, I, I just, and, and you know, it's just I'm, I'm not moving. For, you know, for me, it just has to make business sense. And this yeah, was before I went. On, this, and this, and this before I went on tour. It's like I, I know I've outgrown the market when it comes to DJing. But again, I've had the luxury of saying I had the biggest club in Texas Fast. for ten years. I've Fast. had those bodies for ten years. So yeah, I've outgrown the market. And yeah, I'm the OG, and I can accept that now. But now, like I said, I was probably a dinosaur. People didn't know I was still on the morning show. I've been, you know, before I went on tour, I was still doing the morning show. You can hear me on the mornings doing all the sports reports and traffic. Nobody nice. knew that. But now it's like, oh, this nigga, yeah, I'm out here. <laughs> That's facts. I'm out here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm you out get here. Get to it, man. 2024. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you have up for 2024, man? What bookings? Um, now that the final lap tour is, I don't know if 50 added more dates. But, we got um, we have some makeup dates. We're getting okay. ready to do. We got the rodeo coming up in Houston. We got a, a makeup that, yeah. date in Phoenix. Um, we have some other things in the works. Um, it's the final lap tour, but it's, it's forever. Um, don't be surprised. We may announce another tour in the very near future. But aside from that, when he's going to focus on the Shreveport stuff, TV, movie content. So it's going to be a, a spell where he's not going to hit the stage as much and do all the club stuff for a stint and focus on that. And at that time, I'm actually going to do my own tour. I'm going to go back out. Oh, yeah. Hit, hit, you know, because I came in on, on, on close to the middle mark of the tour, all the other markets that I didn't get a chance to touch, I'm gonna go rock those markets. Yeah, Some yeah. of the markets that I did touch, I'm gonna go back to those markets. I'm gonna go back overseas a little bit. So I'm gonna stay busy until it's time for him to, you know, possibly make possibly make an announcement. And he's working on new music. Oh, come on. So, oh, you know, that that I can say he is working on. I mean, he just posted that today. He posted Dre. Happy birthday to Dre. Yeah. And he said we got some heat on the way. So come on, he got new, some new, new music. Album, and new and music. It, it only makes sense that his DJ breaks the new music in the near future. So and Fifth ain't gonna come out with some bullshit. He's coming out with some heat. Man, let's go, man. So, yeah, we active. Hey, 2024. It's only up from here, man. Um, yeah. For those that do want to get at you, man, follow the movement, man. See what you got going on, man. Uh, if they want to, they might even try to send you some music through your DMs. I don't I know. I get that all the time. Yeah, I, was like, I, don't know I, get the, I get that all the time. And, and, and I do listen to it from time to time. Yeah. But that's not, again, that's not the best way to service music. To If if you're in the market or, you're, or if you're in the vicinity of where I'm at or you know I'm going to be somewhere, I'd rather be pull up and service versus 
sliding in, in a nigga DM, like, yeah, you know, because yeah. I'm, I, it's it's a chance I'm gonna look at it. It's a chance I'm not, you know. That's all red. God damn. Yeah, that's just reality of it. But you know, social media at DJ Chaotic on everything. DJ K A Y O T I K. I ain't hard to find. You know, I'm on there. There you go. And any shout outs you want to give? I mean, shout out to my team. Shout out to the whole G unit. Shout out to Tony Yayo, Uncle Murder. Of course, shout out to the big homie, my brother Fifth. Uh, Renee, Flav, I mean, let's goes on and on. Shout out to all my, my, my Dallas people that embraced me in the market from day one, from the Fat Pimps to the Little Ronnies to Tuck to Tum Tum, uh, T Cash, Puka Leroy. I mean, the list goes on. Yella, Trap. You know, let's go. You know, I, I, you know, Dallas is home for me now. You know, everybody know I'm a New Yorker. Everybody know I'm a Giants fan. You know, but, but. The, the the city the city has embraced me so I, I rock with the city hard body this is where I raised my kids so this is this is my home away from home and I, I embrace it wholeheartedly so you know I'm still here when I am in the club you know if I can break new artists I'm I'm, I'm gonna do it oh and then shout out to, to my, my brother Volcane that set this up so because you know Bo Bo's the homie Bo's the only person that can get me back in the strip club <laughs> he's the only person and he knows it that phone call that phone call in that lunch meeting was difficult like. You know, because I had I've had that stint. I was in DGs for three, four years. Like I, I've done all of that. So to come back to that is just like, all right, Bo, I got you. But that's my brother. So yeah, shout out to all, all my 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 Dallas Fort Worth family out here. So we here, we active. So real quick, as a DJ, you run into a lot of personalities and you make a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. Who would you like to see the top three people in front of the light wall on the blue couch? <laughs> I mean, y'all done had a lot of people on here, so I don't, you know. Yeah, it's been crazy. Y'all done had a, a whole lot of people, so the people I might mention, I mean, obviously, you know, at, at some point, hopefully we can get 50 on here. Come on now. You know. Um, Ransom. We, we, just, we just plugged the call, so we got a, we got a new face, uh, 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 some new energy coming in the building tonight, possibly. Yeah, so. possibly tonight. But, you know, I, I applaud what y'all got going on, and honestly, I think anybody that touches this blue couch is going to be blessed, and vice versa, because y'all got something going on that that... It's magical. Like I said, I sat back and watched like, damn, does he think he's going to ever call me for the blue couch? <laughs> like, no, it's, and it's crazy that- You see, when we was in the club, I was like, finally. Yeah, like, yeah, finally. We, I was like, the rock, like, finally, the blue couch has come back. <laughs> no, and mind you, and you're one of the echelon, but mind you, I talked to every, all the DJs from, uh, we talked to so many, yeah. to where I think we kind of start getting away from the DJ uh, conversations and y'all really hold the keys to these stories, like literally. Yeah, we got some stories. Like literally, y'all done stories. watch all these audio. Y'all just gonna do the rappers all day? I mean, the DJ got the goddamn but I, stories. But I get it, you know, it's, it's great content. And you know, again, you got, if, if, you, if you are a DJ, continue to put in the work and then ultimately you might get that tap on the shoulder. Like I said, I'm thankful. Yeah, you know? it, it was, uh, I think it was Duffy who um, was in, um, not Beamers, but uh, uh, what is it, Club Blue or whatever mm -hmm. you call it, mm -hmm. to where um, Amber Rose walks in, uh, they make a connection. She mm -hmm. goes do a slow walk, and all of a sudden, she's in French Montana's. You know, and, and now she's DJ. And now she's French Montana's DJ. Right. Then she went to reality TV, yeah, and it, yeah. it just like you just, just never, happened. you just never know. And you know, this is in this industry, connecting the dots is vital, and and making sure you keep solid communication with people and solid relationships. Like again, you know. I said, I, I said to Bo, and I say this on camera, I'm like, yo, Bo. Right? He's like, yo, we got we got such and such coming t tonight for the interview. I was like, nigga, am I gonna be interviewed there? He's like, you want to interview there? I'm like, yeah, nigga, I want to interview there. I've been waiting for the blue couch. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's some real so, stuff. No, I appreciate you, my dude. Nah, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully some of them cats come. And yeah, now nah, we just gonna keep turning up, man. But I gotta say, man, it's a blessing to have you on here. This ain't your only time, man. Like nah, I say, nah. don't get too little to forget. Don't be on, don't be so gone on tour that you can't ever stop back and give us some more stories. I know man. how to bring it home. We just man. touching the, we just touching the surface. Yeah, we just touching the surface. Oh, what chaotic right is, now. man. But we're gonna go through that, man. But again, for right now, we gotta say it, man. You're on the couch, uh, DJ Chaotic, man. You are a real life street star, man. <laughs> Yeah! Let's run it up, let's run it up. Yeah! Let go! Shout out to Real Street Stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.